A lot of people ask us about wild camping and what's real life like in the van. Well, the good thing is we get to park up in wonderful places like this with views like that. But sometimes the reality of where you park isn't as always beautiful as it may seem. We're Marianne and Chris. In May 2018, we quit the nine to five, rented our house to travel full time. <laughs> Due to the pandemic, our attempt to drive around the world has been put on pause. Finding ourselves in Turkey, we are going to show you the best this country has to offer. We had a good night's sleep. It was actually quite quiet here, um, apart from the usual. It was very you get, quiet. You get the odd dog barking because there's a few dogs around. Um, but good night's sleep. One of the things we like to do early in the morning when we have the opportunity is empty the toilet. Yes, living in a van, you have to empty your toilet. And where we are parked next to the park, there is a public toilet. So for just one Turkish lira, we can go into the toilet and empty our cassette. And if we can't find a public toilet, then we uh, dip into a campsite. There you go. Or dig an owl. An owl. An owl. Well, the car park's nice and quiet this morning. We have a cassette here that goes in the loo. And for those of you wondering, we tend to only do number ones in the loo. Number two is we tend to go to public toilets or find little cafes and things like that. And we always put it in a black bag, in a discreet bag, so we can carry it. And then let's go to the public loo. So just round the corner, there's a big public toilet. Right, so that's the first chore of the morning done. Yeah. Loo, check. So it's a cloudy day, so we're gonna put the solar lanterns on the roof, just up here charging. That's their little home there. Another thing that we do on cloudy days is we put out our Power Oak solar panel because it just gives an extra boost to the solar. We have two solar panels, as you know, on the roof, but this one just gives us that little bit of extra oomph on cloudy days so the electric lasts longer. And it's wired in into the front. So we just plug it into the wire, which we've got here. We try when we're in busy car parks, not to leave it by the side of Trudy in case somebody drives over it. And uh, on the windscreen is a perfect location. It does actually fit on the inside of the windscreen, uh, but obviously it will get more light outside. And we've got these little magnets that we use for lots of things and it just stops it sliding off. That's perfect. So, so we tend to pass the wire through the window so we don't actually get it stuck in the door. And I can't do it one-handed. Yes, I can. Beautiful. That's it. Good morning. There you go. And we've got a little friendly dog. Morning, pups. <laughs> and then we hang the rest of the wire just around the wing mirror so nobody trips over. Another thing we like to do, especially when there's condensation, is, uh, give the solar panels a bit of a wipe and we can't reach all of it but it all helps it's all soapy why is it all soapy you got another new friend this morning it's looking a bit skinny this one yeah i put lots of food and water out and look at daddy who's that look at daddy <laughs> You're naughty. If you just hop in the van, I nobody would know, would nobody they? Nobody would notice. Until you cross a border. <laughs> We've had a mini disaster in the world of Tread the Globe. Uh, some of you know we had our new logo mounted up here, but it disappeared. We were driving along and all of a sudden there was a loud bang and we didn't really know what was going on. But when we stopped, we realized that something was missing from up there and it's actually gone down the back. Now we've looked at trying to deconstruct it and everything else and it was a bit of a drama. And Ursa was like, don't worry, I'm literally coming down near you in the next couple of days. Hang far, I'm coming to rescue you because he's awesome. <laughs> so 
What's happening outside, you ask? So, Ursul has driven from Istanbul with a new logo, and he and Chris are working out a plan. So instead of relying on tape um, to, to put it up, which we thought might work, he's actually got a slightly thicker perspex that will not fit down the gap. But that secondary safety measure, they're going to drill a little hole in it and actually attach it at the top uh, to stop it falling. Um, we love our new logo, so we're delighted to have it back up. So I've put the kettle on and I'm just making a cup of coffee and we're all gonna sit on the wall and catch up. The boys are hard at work making sure the sign stays up and um, our little puppy's come back to say hello. Haven't you, puppy? Hey, have you come back to say hello? It's up. What a great job we have done. Thank you very much, Ursul. It is looking awesome. You are a legend, as always. We've uh, secured it with a screw at the top here and we've put some super strong double-sided tape this isn't going anywhere we love you Ursul look at this for a place to wake up here in Turkey we've driven down um, a couple of hours south of Takiyadag and uh, it's a lovely little spot. We've got a local friendly dog. <laughs> ah, haven't we, mate? Who's come to say hi. Who's been sat out in the van this morning. And uh, it's just really nice here. The water's crystal clear and there's this lovely little beach. A lot of people ask us about wild camping and what's real life like in the van. Well, the good thing is we get to park up in wonderful places like this with views like that. But sometimes the reality of where you park isn't as always beautiful as it may seem. As with many parts in the world, there are rubbish problems and uh, there's this bin here that's been put obviously by the authorities but there is just so much rubbish all around it the bin is empty and uh, this plastic is going to blow in the sea and uh, pollute the waters areas of natural beauty should be kept beautiful um, we don't like preaching, we don't like showing the negative, we tend to look at the positive in life. Um, but you, we can't help but notice this because it's just so bad. And there's also rubbish on the beach um, down below. So we're gonna do our duty um, and make it a little bit better. One of the rules of wild camping, if you haven't done it before, when you park up somewhere, always leave it cleaner than when you find it so uh, if we park up somewhere that's particularly um, bad with plastic waste and stuff we just pick it up and put it in the bin spend half an hour of our day um, just tidying it up um, but turkey is such a beautiful country um, that we just need it just needs to be left clean because it's going to be ruined otherwise like so many parts um, on the world we can't control everybody, you can just do your little bit, um, but it all helps. We've also put out, the sun's just come out this morning, we've put out our solar panels that were sent to us by Power Oak. These have been wired straight up into our leisure batteries. We do have two solar panels on the roof, but this just gives us a little bit of a boost. And because we're gonna stay still for a couple of days, just to catch up on some video editing and things, because we have a view like that and it's really quiet we had a fabulous night's sleep here um although we were visited by the police what time is it about 11 o'clock 
half yeah. 10 there was a bang on the door and uh, we always get a bit nervous when it's pitch dark and there's like bang bang bang because you don't know what you have no idea who it is and there's no lights outside and uh, they banged again they sounded quite confident so we opened it and there was two police officers um, who just wanted to know who we were why we were here and what we were doing and we explained and uh, they saw the youtube sign and then we had a selfie we showed them a little clip uh, in Turkish from um, Show TV when we were on Show TV. İngiliz gezgin çift karavanla dünya turuna çıktı fakat İstanbul'dayken koronavirüs salgını başlayınca mecburen burada kaldılar. And it explained why we're in Turkey and, and our adventure so it was all good. And they were really nice and his English was perfect. His English was perfect but he was actually worried that we were a little bit close to the cliff I think. Yeah I think. Um, because we've parked kind of close to the edge we we always look and make sure that we don't get too too close either side um but it's fine there's loads of car tracks here people obviously park here normally it's a very nice spot it's beautiful Well, we've pretty well run out of space of bags, but uh, this looks a lot better. We've focused on the plastic so we can put all the glass and stuff in the box there. And uh, this is the field that was covered in plastic bags and it's much better. There you go. So we're leaving the area a lot cleaner than when we left it, aren't we love? Baby wipes and hand wipes have plastic in them too, just in case nobody knew. They don't dissolve, they don't break down. It's literally taken us 20 minutes, half an hour to tidy up this area. It's not a lot of time and if everybody just did a little bit or didn't put it there in the first place, then uh, your beauty spots would be even more beautiful. So something very exciting has just happened. So after our big beach clean this morning, Ursul phoned the local council and guess what's just arrived? Woohoo! Mama! Oh that's so cool! Look at that! That's amazing! Mama! Look at that! Woohoo! They've come to clean the rubbish! We love them! We have woken up in the Turkish town of Gelibolu. You can see the beach behind me. This town is also known as Gallipoli and many of you will have heard of Gallipoli from the famous World War I battle. But more on that a little bit later. So we slept here last night overlooking the sea and the beach. We had a good night's sleep, but these, uh, these sort of lovely viewing places always get busy in the evenings. Um, but by 11 o'clock it had quietened down a little bit. And in fact, this morning we had a little bit of a thunderstorm. It was literally yeah. right above us. You could see it coming over the bay and uh, the heavens opened. It's right above us. At least we're, oh, lightning. At least we're all tucked up in the van. We were supposed to be going out filming this morning, but uh, van life as a YouTuber, sometimes the weather controls what you do. So we're editing instead. I'm very pleased we didn't go out filming, love. And it's actually one of the first days, I think, we've got our, our warm tops on. Yeah, it's definitely got a little bit chillier. And in fact, the storm this morning was a bit of a van shaker, wasn't it? It, it really was. Shake. So next to us uh, is this little park and we came here last night um, and there was a few people sat out having 
barbecues, but there was this lovely family. They offered us um, some food. They had a barbecue going and we were like, no, no, it's fine. Thank you very much. And we started walking off and they literally chased us down <laughs> with, a, with a, a lamb kebab and sort of said, no, you have to have this. So I just can't believe how nice people are. But looking at this park, it's nice. They've got a water tap. You know, if you're in Turkey vanning and you want water, most parks have it. I think it's because people cook barbecues, so they're handling raw meat and food and things and need to wash their hands. So I think people use that's I think that's what people use it for. So yeah, look at this view. So here in Gelibolu, it sits on the Dardanelles Strait, and this body of water that you can see behind me joins the Marmara Sea, which leads up to Istanbul and then into the Black Sea. Back in the day, Istanbul was known as Constantinople, and it was an important trading route from the West with Russia, um, mainly because it was the only way that you could get to Russia in the winter and avoid the snow. So the Battle of Gallipoli actually started in this body of water the British troops and the French boats, they tried to come up this channel of water with the intention of heading up to take over Constantinople. But they were met with fierce resistance, lost some of their ships and had to retreat. We're going to go and have a little look around the town because the sun is shining and uh, we need to make the most of this sunshine before it starts raining again. Fish! Lots of lovely fish swimming here. Again, the water is really clear and uh, just to give you a perspective of where we're walking, Trudy's parked on top there and the park that we went to is just the other side of the top there. What a wonderful afternoon here in Gelibolu. As we walk around, it's really strange. I didn't really know what to expect and I said to Chris, I'm more than likely gonna get very upset because I don't really like negativity or anything tragic it just breaks my heart um but i have to say it's very beautiful here the gardens are manicured and obviously not knowing what to expect in coming to a mass grave to where people tragically lost their lives um in this terrible tragic historical event um but it's beautiful there are lovely walkways cycle routes it's very calm and peaceful here and you can just see the boats uh, just chugging through the small fishing boats and as it's such an important route you can also see big boats carrying containers Just walking along the uh, the front here and it's just lovely. Look at the stone of these cliffs with the blue sky. Looking at this big rock here, it's all made of seashells. I'm not sure whether that's concrete and seashells or whether it's just... Fossilised maybe? Fossilised, I don't know. Any rock specialists out there, let us know. Comment below. You can see the, uh, the huge tankers coming up and down this uh, stretch of water because this is, like I said, a very important trading route even today. And for those of you that are feeling brave, I've actually got a diving board up here. Although it is far too cold to be diving. What do you reckon, love? <laughs> I'm just checking out to see how deep it is. It's deeper. Yeah. Oh, it's much deeper. Much deeper there, look. Oh, it looks lovely, doesn't it? On a hot, sunny day. Oh, yeah.
It's got people fishing, car ferries coming in from the Asian side there. <sighs> So we've arrived in the main town next to the fishing harbour with all the fishing boats and little restaurants dotted around. It's really pretty down here. All the fishing boats, the sun is shining. That's obviously the ferry terminal and uh, the fishermen are here sorting their nets out. And they've still got all the um, flags and things out from uh, National Day, which was yesterday. We're now actually wandering down a few back streets because I'm trying to find the post office to, uh, to send all of the stickers to those of you that have ordered stickers uh, from us. We post them from the road. The t-shirts and things are sent separately, but the stickers we post ourselves. So we're bracing the back streets to try and find the PTT, which <laughs> should be just around the corner, hopefully. Okay, we found the PTT. Look at the queue. Small queue. It's going down the road. <laughs> We've made it back to Trudy. Just in time before the heavens opened again. It's gone really dark, just like that. The PTT was fine. It took about 45 minutes queuing. We know for next time to make sure we go really early in the morning. I tend to empty it because Chris is messy and clumsy. <laughs> so Geli Bolu sits on the um, body... Um... Ooh! Oh my lord! That made the van move! Ooh! This town is also known as Gallipoli and many of you will have heard of Gallipoli. Gallipoli? Ah, three, two, one. Right, finally, shave time. Oh! You're still there. That's the end of the show. We would like to thank you all very much for watching. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you don't miss a video and we will see you next time. Bye for now.